This is what I'm going to show you how to make in this video. As always, you can get this full project file, samples, mini presets, literally everything that you just heard is available right at the top of the description on my website. Definitely don't miss out. This is a great way to take your tracks to the next level today. You know, if you need some new inspiration or if you've been struggling with your tracks, this is something you can do right now to make better music instantly. Link is at the top of the description. Also want to let you guys know at the top of the description, I only have a few more spaces left for ghost productions and custom tutorials and track finishing this month and next month and in the foreseeable future. So go ahead and grab one now. The link is right down there if you've been thinking about it or just check it out. It's really great value, again, to take your tracks to the next level today. And yeah, thank you so much for the support, guys. Let's dive into the video. All right, so this is some pretty standard sort of like minimal house. Again, kind of like that Mihai pole sort of style. So we're starting at 124 BPM, and the first thing here is like the kick and bass groove. Again here, it's actually pretty simple. So it's made up of three things. So we got an 808 kick, which if you listen to these kinds of tracks that these guys do, it, this is what they use a lot, is the 808 kick. And I'll show you how to get the right one though, because there's a very like particular technique to it. But then there's also like an actual bass line, which if you notice, is very straight. It's like eighth notes. You know, there's not a lot of syncopation there. And then there's some syncopated 808 tom. You can hear that bouncing off the kick. So those are the three layers. And that's what you're going to start with when you make the track. That's what I started with here. And that's going to give you a really solid foundation to build on. So the 808 kick, as you can see, is actually pretty simple. What you're basically going to do is take an already pretty strong 808 kick sample. Like, I'll play you this one. So that's the sample we're starting with. And then I made it shorter, right? Because you just want it to be a little... And then what I'm doing here, the last thing that really brings into life, that's subtle, but it's going to do a lot, is this pitch envelope. If you notice, it's only at three semitones, meaning like it's really not on that much. But if we turn it off, and then on, it just makes that kick like punch through that much more at the start. And if we turn it up even more, You can see there's a range you want to stay in, but this adds a lot of attack to your kick. So that's a really great way to make your kick punch without having to add a whole bunch of extra processing. It's just taking the sample and beefing it up a little. And then we also have this utility converting into mono. So for the bass line, like I said, it's a very simple bass line. We're in the key of C, and so this is using the root note, the fourth, and the fifth. Very simple. And again, it's just walking up and back down. That's what you want. You want something simple that's just going to groove well with that kick. For the sound, it's made with operator, so we've got this FM sound with just a few sine waves. You can see the first two are, are an octave down, and then the third one's up a little, so you get some harmonics from that. And then there's the low-pass filter with a little envelope, and then it's just being sidechained. I have this sidechain up here, which is just a kick, but it's like really short, and then it's muted, so you can get a little bit more groove with the sidechain. And then for this guy, again, it's just an 808 tom. This one's the simplest sound. It's not about processing or, you know, putting a whole bunch of group processing on these. It's just getting sounds that work well together and turning them up. So the next thing after that would be the drums. This is, you know, obviously a very percussion focused style. And there's a lot that makes it up, but it's actually not that complicated. So we'll start with what's right up front. You can hear we have this snare and the main hi-hat. So for the snare, it's these two like rim shot samples. These are actually more like drums you'd probably use for like, you know, like boom bap hip hop beats or something. But it has a great texture. You can see those sit really well. Like the texture of those with that 808 kick is nice because it's like something organic with something synthetic. And then we also have these. So again, it's just really an 808 hi-hat. But it's that secret little shaker layer underneath it that adds all that mid-range to it. So then we have a few percussions. 
So you can see, I actually have a breakbeat. So you probably wouldn't think to hear a breakbeat, but this is actually something I noticed when I was referencing these tracks. Is I think they're doing this a lot, where you basically take a breakbeat, but you filter it, right? So it's not going to be, like, right up in your face, you know, like if this was an actual breakbeat track. But you can see it's filtered a lot, and then there's, like, a flanger on it that's just moving around, like, super slow. And that gives you a really nice kind of moving percussion, because really this, this style is so percussion-focused, so you want to have like interesting little things like this that can kind of like keep it moving. And you can hear just having that in the background, there's also a low pass filter with a little LFO. It's a really great way to have something in the background that's organic and also adding some movement so it's not just the same one bar loop always. It's also a little shaker loop, we got some more hi-hats. This is, you know, some of these kind of more, like, background percussions. You can see this one's like this snare. I put it through an echo and then a resonator as well. So you get, like, that metallic. That's really good for this style. I've heard that in a lot of these tracks. That, like, metallic percussion texture. That's how you do that. Those resonators are really good for the style. You know, some, like, 808 rim shots. You know, again, just little background stuff. There's also a bit of live percussion. You know, like some live bongos and stuff like that. You definitely need some live loops in there to keep it organic. We got this guy, and then the last one down here is this one. So you see, we have all different kinds of percussion. Stuff that's constantly happening, stuff that's right up in your face, stuff that's in the background, and even some stuff that's just happening every now and then like this. So then we have all of these sounds, which kind of works together as a group. And what's happening here, I'll play you these. So you can hear it's all these little, like, background kind of texture sounds, right? You know, and these are made a lot of different ways. Mainly it's taking, like, organic sounds, like this shaker loop, for example or maybe just like a bit of noise inside of Operator, and adding effects, like, all the Ableton effects are actually really good for this. Like, you don't need any plugins for this, because, like, between Grain Delay and the Flanger, or the Phaser, which you can see I used, you can see I even used, like, some vibrato, like, on this one. And that, like, intense Phaser. You can create all these cool little sounds, and it's going to keep it kind of a bit more lively, because, like, the drum groove on its own needs some contrast. You need the drums, which are like constant, and then this stuff, which is every now and then. To kind of fill up the background. You can hear that, and it wouldn't really have that like proper, you know, really full, while still minimal groove if it didn't have these. And again, these are just like, you know, these different things. Like, you know, I'm pretty sure this one's a little breakbeat. Yeah, with a phaser on it. Cool. So then we have the synths. Starting with this main pad. So what's happening here is it's actually a G major 9 chord going up to a B minor 9 chord. But then I added these lower notes as well. So like in the case of G, for example, I added a fourth down here. And then here, this is, well, in the, in the key of G major, this is the major 7th and the 6th. And so those just kind of, you know, make the chords a bit more, it's almost like musical texture, right? For the sound on this one, it's made with wavetable, it's a sine wave going through a low pass with this high resonance, so you kind of get like a nice, like more, um, more like an analog sound out of that. The resonance can really add a lot of texture to synths like this that would otherwise be kind of flat. I've got a bit of unison, some chorus, reverb, sidechain, and just a high pass. We have this guy. Which is playing the same chords that I just showed you, but it's this analog patch where it's just two saw waves and there's a low pass filter opening up, you know, chorus, reverb, high pass, and that just adds something at the end of every eight bars. That's like kind of tense, right? Because otherwise it would be 
like all smooth this gives you something that's like tense coming in that's gonna reset the loop so to speak every eight bars we have this so this is just like this one held out note that kind of comes in over top of that chord it interacts with the chord really well musically it's an f sharp and yeah this is just analog it's a square wave saw wave we're using the formant filter and a little bit of an LFO to give it like that and some vibrato. I have this, you know, just like a little chord stab, just playing a C minor or a B minor. Two saw waves, low pass filter with an envelope, chorus, echo. We have another little chord stab. Using these chord stab samples is nice here because you, you can see we can make it like fade in and it'll get like that right there. And then we also have this little vocal. So again, just all these little musical sounds that just pop in and out. And that's really the key to the style. It's like one solid groove happening with the drums and then all these things over top of it popping in and out. So, that's going to be it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get this full project files, samples, MIDI, presets. Everything you saw in this video, this whole template, is available at the top of the description on my website. Definitely go grab that. It's a really great way to support me. If you enjoy these videos, I don't make a whole lot from YouTube. But it's a great way to help keep this channel going so I can keep showing you guys new stuff like this. Plus, it's a really great way to support yourself and take your tracks to the next level today. You can also check out my custom tutorials and ghost productions and track finishing and lessons. The link is at the top of the description as well. Definitely go check that out before it gets too filled up. Like I said, just wanted to give you guys a little warning there. And yeah, thank you so much everybody and I'll see you tomorrow with another video.